we're, we're nearing the end here. Uh, in this video, I want to look at one more fractal pattern. The, uh, the fractal pattern that I want to look at is something we talked about at the very beginning, this branching tree, a tree which has two branches and each have two branches and each have two branches. Why do I want to look at this one? We've looked at a bunch of fractal patterns already. The reason this one is important is in our implementation, we're going to make use of translate and rotate, transformations in processing. And when doing so, we're also going to make use of push matrix and pop matrix, which is going to be a, a, a very interesting technique inside of a recursive function, how we do this. So let's just first remind ourselves, what is this, what, what is the production rule, right? We start, <laughs> start with a branch, which is a line, start with line. At the end of the line, uh, so that's one, uh, step two is at end, let's say we rotate, um, I don't know, 45 degrees, or rotate 45 degrees, and draw another line. Then we rotate, I can't, ah, rotate negative 45 degrees and draw a line. Right? Now for each, for two and three, we want to do the same thing. Go to the end, rotate 45 degrees and draw two lines. For each of these, rotate 45 degrees and draw two lines. So the thing I guess I missed in describing these production rules is also shrink the length of each branch each time. So you can sort of start to see that this is the rule. So let's start to write code that implements this rule. So here I have a very simple processing sketch. <laughs> it's over here, right? All that it's doing is it makes a window and it draws a line from the bottom of the window to the middle of the window. So let's write that in a slightly different way. What if the first thing I did was translate to the bottom of the window. Then what I'm really drew, doing is drawing a line that goes from 0, 0 to 0, comma, and let's just say negative 150. So I'm going to make a line there that goes, we translate to the bottom, and draw a line from 0, 0 to 0, comma, negative 150. Great. Now what do I want to do? What did we say? I want to rotate uh, by 45 degrees, pi divided by 4. And let's draw another line. From where, though? Oh, wait. What do we need to do? Right? We went from here. We drew a line from the bottom to there. Now I want to rotate and draw another line. I need to, after I'm done, translate up to there. So I'm going to say, hey, let me translate from 0, comma, negative 50. Right? Now, if I were to draw a little circle at 0, 0, where is that little circle? It's at the top, right? We translate, just to be clear here, this is our processing window. The first thing we did was translate to the bottom, then draw a line here. Then what we did is translate to here. The reason why we're doing that is now we're going to rotate, draw a line, rotate, draw a line. So let's go back and we're going to say, hey, instead of just drawing that ellipse, let's rotate by an angle and draw another line, 0, 0, 0, comma, negative, and we'll shorten it to negative 100. And look at this. Now we have our line going to the right. We need our line going to the left. Mm, how do I do that? Uh, rotate negative pi divided by 4, line 0, 0, 0, comma, negative 100. Will this get it? Oh, this is going to get it. This is going to get it. Oh, no, right? Because what did we do? We rotated 45 degrees and drew this line, and then we rotated back 45 degrees. But really what we want to do is rotate, then pop back to where we were originally, and then rotate the other direction. This is where we can use push matrix and pop matrix. Push matrix saves the current transformation state. Where, am I, where have I translated rotated to? Then pop matrix restores it. So what if I actually just said push matrix here, pop matrix here, Let's simplify some things and then rotate the other direction. And look at this. We've got the beginnings of this now, right? We're able to draw a line from the bottom to the middle, rotate, draw a line, pop, save, rotate, draw a line, pop back, rotate, draw a line. And in essence, you know, we could look at this and say, well, we're going to be doing this over and over again recursively. We should probably push matrix and pop matrix around this particular branch as well, right? So this is the trunk of the tree, right? Let's put some comments in here. Trunk, 
branch right, branch left. Right? If we look at all this stuff together, we can see what's going on. We drew the trunk, we moved to the end of the trunk, we branched right and drew a line, we branched left and drew a line. So this is how transformations work in processing. But why are we doing this? We want to do this recursively. We want to say for every line, push, translate, rotate, draw a line, pop, rotate, draw a line, for every branch. So what I want to do is look at these three steps and look at this branching algorithm. What if instead of drawing a line there, what we were actually doing was calling a branch function? What if this was somehow a function called branch, which at the beginning just draws a line? Whoops, sorry. And then always calls branch itself, where it needs to draw the next two lines, right? What if what we're doing is we're recursively drawing a line, branching right, branching left, draw another line, which branches right, which branches left, to draw another line, and we're always pushing and popping along the way so we can always remember and pop back wherever we need to. This is what, this is very, very hard to picture in your head. This is one of these instances where we're writing all this text-based code and picture your head. There's got to be a better way. And I, I, before this video ends, I'm going to have to do a Google search for this. But I want to show you um, a really wonderful project which allows you to draw fractals in a procedural code-like way rather than write the actual code, which I think is a, and I'll, I'll link to it below. Okay, but let's actually now just go and say, hey, well, this must be in an example. Oops. I'm going to open up our examples. Oh, boy. Um, in chapter 8, fractals, and the one that I want to look at is just 8.4 tree. So let's run this one and see it. Um, whoops, it's so tiny. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Let's run it, and let's see what's going on. Right. So look here, we can see, right here's the tree, and the angle is being controlled by the mouse, and you can see here's our root, which has two branches, that's two branches, two branches. Another thing that's interesting about this is not only are the lengths of the branches changing, but the thickness of the line, is it getting thinner? No, it's not, but that would be an interesting exercise, and I do have one of the examples that does that, right? The branches are getting thinner, th uh, shorter, could the actual thickness get thinner as well? So let's just take a look at the code. Um, um, and what we can see here is exactly what I just talked about. So, oh, uh, maybe it is in this. Um, so what I want, I'm sorry, boy, I'm not doing a good job here. So this is exactly what I'm talking about. We have a branch function which draws a line. And as long as that line, that line shrinks by 2 thirds every time, and as long as that line is still greater than 2 pixels, push matrix, rotate to the right, branch again. Push matrix, rotate to the left, branch again, which calls the function again. So interestingly enough, this is a great thing that you could do is take this code, print it out, get a piece of paper, get a pen, try to be processing and execute it. And you'll, you'll see an interesting result. I encourage you to do this on your own. Ah, here's my eraser. But just for a moment, one of the things you'll see that's actually happening here is we draw the first line, and then we call branch to the right. But that calls recursively, so it calls branch to the right. And that's calls recursively, so it calls branch to the right, which calls branch to the right. Eventually, we're done, and we pop back and branch to the left, and pop back and branch to the left. But here, then we have to branch to the right, and then we have to pop back and branch to the left, and then we pop back and pop back and branch to the right, branch to the right, and then pop back. Right? It's kind of, I can't even do it. <laughs> you know, I could do it if I sat down slowly and, and did it very methodically. And I think this is a really useful way to understand where are we pushing and where are we popping? How does this recursive structure work when we are kind of walking through it almost in this, in this turtle graphics, right? If you remember programming with logo, this idea of a turtle being able to move forward, turn, move forward, draw a line. This is all we're doing here. We have a turtle that can move forward, but can also remember where it was at any point to pop back and continue off in another direction. So um, you know, another exercise you could try would actually be to animate this and see if you could draw one branch at a time to actually see that order. By the way, a clue to doing all of this that we're going to look at in a slightly more sophisticated way is going to happen in the next video. In the next video, we're actually going to look at um, L systems, which is really going to implement a turtle graphics drawing engine. 
So a few other things I'll note about this. This is the basic example. And you can see um, the basic result here. But a couple other things you should note about this, which are interesting to think about, is that if um, one thing you might look at is thinking about all those angles and lengths and how many branches. Whoa. Um, this is a place where a stochastic um, fractal, one that involves randomness and probabilities, for example, what if each branch has 0, 1, 2, or 3 branches attached to it? What if the angles are random? You know, randomness isn't exactly getting us more organic, a more organic quality. It's giving us variety. But what if you used Perlin noise or had some other systematic approach to how those trees are formed? What if you thought about those branches as paths? Paths like we had with steering behaviors. There's a vehicle moving along the trunk. It breaks into two vehicles that move and are seeking a target. We might get some curved paths there that could give us a sort of more curvaceous tree. There's lots that you could think of with doing with these examples. And you could also, by the way, which I believe is in the repository and I need to maybe make a better um, version of it, is you could also, I think in these exercises, you could also apply the array list, uh, this is with different thicknesses. You could also apply, whoops, I'm sorry, everybody, exercise 8.6. Uh, nope. <laughs> Where is it? Uh, I'm doing a terrible job. OK, so I have failed you. Tree array list leaves. There we go. Exercise 8.8 .8 and 9. One thing that we can look at is how can we get the positions and make objects Right? We could use the ArrayList technique. So this particular example is using the ArrayList technique to keep track of the locations of all those branches. These branches could actually wiggle and move. You can see I deposited, if you zoom in, it's really close, there's little circles at the end of each branch which are like leaves because I know the end positions. Right? With, that, with, with translate and rotate this magical recursive function, I'm not keeping track of all those locations. But if I make objects out of every branch, then I can start having leaves fall from the tree, branches sway in the wind. And this is something you might also think about as well. So that array list technique that we looked at can also be applied to this tree example. And it might be worth perhaps going through this in more detail at another time, but I think that this video is, is it is what it is right now. So, um, OK, thank you. And um, there's a lot to think about with this. And boy, um, I probably, anyway, I'm going to go on. And we're going to talk about L systems in the next one. <laughs>